My name's Janie Schwartz and Prosper has invited me on to the online prosperity show. Um, I do HR human resources consulting and I also teach Pilates and Prosper and I have a lovely conversation today about firstly, I guess, how I got into a dual career, but also um, my approach to, I guess, a holistic work-life balance and how my definition of work-life balance might be a little bit different to yours or the same. But uh, it would be great if you could have a listen and find out a little bit more. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, a show where we explore individuals that are actually choosing themselves instead of just going through life in the humdrum fashion. Now, today, I've brought you Jenny. Jenny, who is a people consultant. In essence, she's an HR consultant who is also a Pilates instructor. Now, Jenny, thank you for coming on the show today. How are you? Thank you, Prosper. I'm good. I'm very good for a Monday. Thank you for asking. Fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, while I was talking to Jenny, you were just getting acquainted and she was letting me know all about the things that happened to her, but how she has actually managed to pivot and uh, be a phoenix that is outside the ashes. And um, like any of us, she lives in Melbourne, where we were one of the most <laughs> locked down uh, cities in the world. It was 284 days, right, Jenny? Yeah. Absolutely. So some people uh, decided to make sense of that time and actually uh, create lives that they absolutely love. And Jenny is one of those people coming from a job in HR, which um, she obviously didn't find her space. She has now found her space uh, combining the two things she loves the most, which is Pilates and HR. Now, Jenny, I could go on and on talking about uh, what you have done and who you've been and what we can expect from you, but you're here. So you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your journey up until um, maybe the COVID hit in Melbourne in uh, 2020. Sure. Um, I'm actually from Perth originally, and I used to teach physical education to, to young kids, which was just awesome. And then I moved to Melbourne kind of, I don't know, I didn't really want to do that anymore. So I went back and did my postgrad at Monash in industrial employee relations and started within, I guess, that field. And my first job actually was with a consulting company, which was amazing. And it really gave me a really a great foundation, I think, for consulting, um, which is which has been really good for me throughout all my career, through my career. Um, in about 2012, I set up my consulting business called the HRL. And I've been basically consulting on and off from that time. So what often happens is I'll, I'll go into a business as a consultant and a couple of times they've asked me to stay. So I've managed to, I guess, agree on some, I guess, terms and conditions for want of a better word that that has been a win-win for both of us and I've stayed. So I've kind of moved in and out of consulting and in and out of having permanent jobs since um, for about the last 12 or 14 years. So it's really interesting, this whole hybrid working, I've been doing that for, uh, you know, since 2011, really, um, not the last couple. So, you know, it's fantastic. When COVID hit, well, just before COVID hit, I had some personal things happen that I guess wasn't expecting and kind of threw me for six a bit. And so when COVID hit, um, like many, um, I actually quite enjoyed the lockdown. It gave me time to just reflect and diffuse and, and I guess reset and, and start to focus on and stop, really. People just are so busy, so I just stopped. And it got me thinking about what I wanted to do and, you know, who said you had to have one career or do one thing in your life? And I realised that I loved having flexibility, but I loved doing multiple things. So why not start to create a life around that and I did also didn't want to have a life where I felt like I was working and then I had the weekend and um I don't know I wanted a more fluid and free life that was a lot more flexible so I went back and I studied uh, Pilates, uh got my cert for in Pilates for reformer and, and Matt and uh, I loved it and that was challenging for me on a number of levels um 
more so the physical side. You know, I was a 50 something year old female trying to bend my body in ways that it didn't like very much. So it got me fitter and stronger, which was amazing. And the win-win from that, not only did I gain a lot of empowerment, you know, when you, when you actually achieve a challenge that you didn't think you could do, you feel fantastic. But, you know, some physical ailments, like I've had a chronic back issues over the years, kind of just went away and I was able to manage my physical and mental health a lot better. The, the Pilates just gave me so much more than just a certification and the ability to go and teach. It was a very holistic win for me. Um, and so I started to incorporate both my HR consulting and my Pilates because I wanted to create a lifestyle that wasn't about work and uh, weekend, i.e. the traditional work-life balance. To me, it was more about being able to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. You know, there are times, Prosper, when I wake up on a Sunday morning and I feel like actually working, you know, doing my consulting work because my brain is just, it, suddenly I've woken up and the juices are flowing. So I didn't want to be bound by those restrictions of Monday to Friday, nine to five, or, or here's a Tuesday and a Thursday, because the body, you, you don't work that way. You know, stuff happens. You're really tired one day, you're really energized another day. So I've tried and, and succeeded, not a hundred percent always, but to create a life where I've got time to use my brain, use my body, but also allow me time out when I need it to do my own exercise and my own workout. Um, to escape down to the, you know, I've got a really good friend who lives in the country to clear my diary and go down and spend time with her, to go to Perth to visit my family. It's, it's given me a really nice work-life balance that's, um, I've diffused the stress. Now, don't get me wrong, there are definitely moments when I'm under pressure, um, you know, it, it hasn't, but it's allowed me to manage that better. So a live example that I've literally worked through at the moment is I've got a lot of work on right now and I'm going away in a month to Morocco and I've got to get this work done and I just don't have enough hours in the day. So I've shut down all my Pilates teaching for the next month to focus on my consulting because that's what just what I need to do right now. And then when I get back from my holiday, I'll, I'll start doing the teaching again. And I feel really lucky and privileged to be able to do that. Fantastic. And that, that helps pressure and the stress yeah fantastic and thank you so much for sharing uh, with us that journey there now you did mention a word that is very elusive to a lot of people work-life balance some people think work-life balance is working three days and having a five-day weekend or something like that what's your actual definition of work-life balance to me work-life balance is i work when i want and I don't when I don't. <laughs> now, I don't get that. It's not 100%, but um, I reckon 80% of the time, which I think is a pretty good ratio, 80% of the time I'm, I'm working when my, my brain is engaged, when I feel really switched on mentally, um, whether that be 10 o'clock at night, whether that be on a weekend, whether that be during the day. Um, I have the ability to meet Prosper for a coffee or for lunch because I can manage my diary accordingly. Sure, there are times when my clients, you know, I have to obviously fit in with my clients, but my clients are also really understanding. And, you know, one thing I really learned when I started my business is how to actually communicate and verbalize what I want as opposed to just saying, yes, I'll, I'll fit in with you. And it's amazing when you actually, in an appropriate and professional way, say, no, I can't make it that day, but can you make it this time? Most people, 90% of the time, are, are accommodating. So I think I, that's been a massive lesson for me um, moving into my own business and consulting is I just don't have to say, not only do I not have to say yes to every piece of work, but I also don't have to say, yes, I can be available at that time. And to me, that's work-life balance. So, you know, there are times when I'm just feeling just shitty and I'm not going to present myself in the best way to my client. And so I don't want to turn up that day. So I'll arrange my schedule around when I can be best present for them. Fantastic. And for me. Fantastic. And obviously there's a big importance around physical, mental wellness and, um, you know, just the whole um, 
well-being. Now, can you just talk about the importance of physical and mental wellness, especially during these challenging times and how maybe having uh, a modality like Pilates can actually help somebody, um, you know, get that sort of balance in their life? Sure. Look, everybody knows it. It's, I'm not going to say anything that people don't already know, but, uh, Men, you know, mental well-being and physical well-being and physical act activity is and sleep, everything and diet, everything is really heavily linked. You know, poor gut is linked to um, emotions. So I, I believe in a really holistic approach. We're not meant as creatures. We weren't created to sit at a desk and be sedentary. You know, we were we were built to go do stuff. So when you exercise or when you release tension, you know, whether that be, you know, I also sing in a choir. So, you know, whether you sing or whether you walk your dog or whether you get fresh air, you know, the sunlight, the physical exertion, it releases all the good endorphins, which helps balance you out mentally. It's also a really good time out. Um, and I know there's a lot of discussion around being present. Um, so, you know, my definition, which is really the definition is, being mindful so literally you know when I go to Pilates I'm in Pilates and you know there are times when my mind is racing 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 and I really notice that when that happens to me I'm not enjoying the Pilates and I'm not getting the most out of it mentally and physically and on the times when I go to Pilates and that's I turn my phone off and, and I'm there for that 50 minutes I walk out of there and it's like my god I just I feel re-energized re-engaged I, I feel really reset so I think people need to find their thing and it could be anything. It can be going to see a movie, walking to the movies to see the movie, walking their dog, going to the beach, getting some sunlight, uh, playing a game of squat. Like it, it can be anything, but physical activity is really important. You've got to keep that body moving. And not only does it release the endorphins to mentally make you feel better, you will feel better physically and it can help manage those ailments before it, you know, it becomes that cycle. You know, you wake up, oh, my back's sore. So people tend to sit down or then they feel fat and lazy. Like it, it becomes this drain that you kind of go down. Whereas if you keep, you've just got to keep moving. And one of the reasons that I also wanted to do the Pilates and really incorporate that into my life as an activity that I can do as I get older, I look at the aging population and the issues all start when people stop moving. So moving doesn't mean you have to be a runner. You know, you don't have to do huge high impact activity. You need to do age appropriate activity, but you've just got to keep moving. Fantastic. Keep moving. So there's one thing that you mentioned that really caught my attention that you are going to be traveling to Morocco and uh, good on you for choosing the motherland uh, to, to visit. <laughs> but I just, I was just thinking how you are sort of putting your Pilates on the sideline while you're finishing your HR work. And then you could always, uh, you know, catch on with the Pilates uh, teaching later on. Now, people might be wondering, how do you actually balance your Pilates teaching with your other responsibilities? And what sort of strategies have you found helpful in managing your time effectively? So my Pilates is really my only routine, apart from my own personal um, going to the gym, et cetera, et cetera, that I book in. So I'll have certain classes during the week that's just a, a rinse and repeat, you know, so it might be Monday morning, it might be Tuesday night. And what I've tried to do is book my, uh, organize my classes that I teach that don't cut in the middle of the day or don't cut into a section of the day. So I tend to teach either like, you know, nine o'clock in the morning or 5.30, 6.30 at night. And that basically keeps my days free for my HR stuff because I, I need to be reasonable and realistic in that my clients are obviously working, you know, an eight to six day or a nine to five day. So I, that, that's when I fundamentally need to be available. So I've got, you know, 20% of my life is scheduled and the other 80% isn't. And on the days that I can't do my Pilates for whatever reason, so I mentioned before that I've dropped teaching for this month, 
I'm really lucky that the places where I work are pretty flexible. I've just let them know in advance. I've organized covers for people to, to cover my classes and just said, I'll be back in June or back in May, sorry, the middle of May. Um, and, you know, that's, I guess that's the benefit of being a contractor or a casual or a consultant. I'm not really bound to turn up every day. Like, obviously I'm obligated when I'm booked in, but on the days that I can't, I just organize somebody to cover for me. And that's how I manage my schedule. Absolutely. Um, and some of the stuff that I've also come across in your work, you talk about finding your why and how asking the three whys to really dig deeper into the real answer or goal. Can you just walk us through that um, aspect and how it actually helps people get or find um, you know, the, the reason for being? Sure. Well, for those of you who have children or are familiar with young kids, <laughs> When kids turn about two, two and a half, they start to get very verbal and extremely inquisitive. And they're, you know, like they're like sapped. They just suck in all that information. And I don't know if, I don't prosper. I don't know if you have kids. I do. I do. I do yeah, have I a teenager who asks why every three seconds. So. <laughs> so that's when they start and it's like, you know, they ask the why and then you give them an answer and then they go, but why? And then you have to dig a little bit deeper and then they say, but why? So they don't just settle for the first answer. They're inquisitive and they want to know and they keep asking and asking until they understand. And that's the same philosophy works in business. So, um, or actually in, in anything really. So quite often, and I'll use HR consulting as an example, 85% of the time or 90% of the time I'll get contacted by a potential client and they'll call me and they'll say, we need to, we've had an individual leave. We need to backfill her role. And I could just go and recruit that role for them or, or set up some succession planning or whatever it is they need. But instead of just doing that, I'll use the equivalent of the why, and it might not literally be the word why, but continue to ask questions until we peel off the, the, the layers and layers and layers to get to the root. It's finding the real root of the problem or the real cause of the problem. And more often than not, when I'm consulting with my clients, what they call me in for is not usually the outcome that we have. So the example of a basic recruitment actually turns out to be uh, there's an issue with their structure there's an issue with their processes within the business. There's lack of clarity with the roles that people are actually doing. There might be a management issue. There might be a cultural issue or problem as to why this individual left. And so they're actually the root causes because if we were just going to go and backfill and if we keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same outcome and same result. Whereas if you actually peel back the onions and ask the why, 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 you get to the real root of the problem and you fix that foundation first and then you build on that. And that's fundamentally how I work with my clients. Fantastic. When you just mentioned kids, I was just thinking all the conversations that I have with uh, my little girl. But moving forward, how do people lose that sense of curiosity? Like, um, I know this, this is something that is very crucial, you know, for people to really get to the root of it. Because I think if people really knew why they were doing certain things, there will be different outcomes, different results, like you say. Like, um, where, where, where does it all get lost? I think fear is a big one. I think people get uh, quite complacent um, in their lives in general, and it's easier to, you know, better, you know, that better the devil you know than the devil you don't. So I think fear traps people. I think people get tired. You know, um, it's very scary to try something new. It might be scary financially, um, spiritually, emotionally, you know, whatever. Um, and so it's just easier to just keep doing the same thing because it's familiar. Most people don't like change and change can occur on any level. And when you start asking a lot of questions, the outcome of that is likely to be change. So I believe that most people, if they just stop, a lot of people, sorry, I'll backtrack on that. 
what I've really noticed with a lot of my clients and working in corporate, people are busy being busy as opposed to actually being busy and focused on the right things. Um, and people tend to focus on the things that they like to do as opposed to stopping and reevaluating and working out the things that they should be doing in order to benefit most. And this is often the whole, you know, disconnect, I believe, as to why a lot of people are unhappy in their work. Um, because they're not truly doing what they want or they're trying to do what they want, but it doesn't connect with the role that they're in or the company or the business that they're working for. So it's a very convoluted answer, but I think fear is a massive um, a massive thing generally that holds people back in every aspect of life. And as soon as you start asking that why and as soon as you lose that inquisitive nature, you're just, you're just blocking it out. So you're just putting everything to the side. I don't need to think about it because it's not there. So I'll just keep doing this as opposed to, oh, what's going to happen if I actually open my eyes? So it might be in personal relationships. It might be fear of actually thinking, oh, God, I don't want to be with that guy anymore. Or this isn't how I thought my life was going to turn out. Because then once you acknowledge it, you then have to make the decision to act or to not act. Whereas if you just keep going with blinkers, oh, yeah, it's all okay, we'll just keep going down this path. And that's the same with work. If I start asking these questions, oh, I'm not really happy in my job or I need to be asking these questions but I'm too scared to because I don't know the response that I'm going to get. It's, it's just easier, no, I'll just keep going with my blinkers. So I think fear is probably the main driver and also people just get so tired and just caught up and sucked in their day-to-day -day life they don't stop and make the time Fantastic. Now, you also mentioned, I think, right at the start, um, you know, a statement that says, who says you have to have one career at a time? And that now explains why you can actually juggle and balance these two sort of careers. What sort of advice can you um, give to individuals that are considering maybe a career change or um, especially in the midst of what we're going through right now when interest rates just seem like they're hitting everybody in the head and they're thinking, if I change my career, maybe that will mean I can't afford my mortgage, I can't afford to keep up, um, you know, with the way life is going. What, what, what sort of advice would you give somebody like that? Look, I agree. You definitely, there's a practical side to life. Like you, you know, you need money to live and anybody who says you don't, that's not true. You you have people have commitments, whether you're renting, whether you're paying a mortgage, you've got to put food on the table. And for those of you, you know, with a family, it's a wider commitment because you've got mouths to feed and kids to put through school and all the stuff that goes along with that. Um, I guess for me, I was, I guess, in a more fortunate position where it was just me. I, I don't have children and I had substantial savings. And so I had a buffer. I think you do need a buffer, but you also need a very strong business plan and you need to map out the steps um, in order to get where you are. So have a, a, a clear strategy and an understanding. So I would definitely start with um, what does the end look like for you and then work backwards. I'm a huge believer in outsourcing. You can't be everything everybody has strengths so you need to work on those strengths and acknowledge the stuff that you're not great at so if you have no idea how to put a business plan or a business strategy together outsource it if you need financial advice go and get a financial advisor it's the same if you need a personal trainer to help you get fit go and get a pt but from a business perspective you definitely need to reach out and f and build your own little business community for people to give you support. You need a financial buffer. And yeah, the reality is if you have been living off, you know, if you have been getting a salary that's coming in, um, my recommendation would be if you're in a position, if you're working full time and you've got a side hustle that you kind of want to start to make a more full time hustle or whatever, just keep your salary job, but maybe if you can bring it back down to part-time hours. So you've still got a regular income, you've still got some foundation cash coming in, but that opens up your, your diary or your free time to start building your other business. And you might find that you like that balance. 
and you might find, you know what, enough with this paid work, I'm going to move full time into my hustle. Like, you don't really know until you try. Um, in my years, I people who I meet who know exactly what they want to do and how they want to get there and they've known it since they were 10 years old are very few and far between. I find most of us kind of find our way as we plod through life and suddenly we might stumble on it. You know, that question, what do you want to do when you grow up? Most, in my opinion, most people don't actually know the answer to that. And the people who do are very, very fortunate who have this thing and they strive towards it and they're successful. Most of us don't really know and we either find it by accident or we find it by a lot of soul searching and we give it a go and then that doesn't work or we might give something else a go. So I would suggest on a practical terms, you've got to, you've got to keep that money coming in and if you've got an income, keep that coming in, but if you can reduce it to find the time and the space. You, I'm not going to say anything you don't know. If you're used to buying those luxuries, yes, you have to sacrifice and compromise on stuff. But I think you find that when you start to love what you do, you don't need those five handbags or those 10 pairs of shoes, <laughs> you know. For a lot of people, not all, that that's the crutch or that's the thing that's kind of been keeping them propped up in that happiness level as opposed to, um, no, I love what I do, therefore I'm more content, therefore I don't need to go shopping. Now, I love shopping, don't get me wrong, <laughs> like, but I've definitely noticed I don't need as much now. Absolutely. And I really appreciate that. Now, Jenny, if somebody's watching this and they're really intrigued to maybe learn a little bit more about what it is that you're doing and just keep following you on your journey, um, what, what would be the best way for people to um, stay connected to you or get in touch with you? Sure. So I'm on, uh, I'm not, well, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, so it's Janie at the HRL or, or Janie, if you look up the HRL, in Melbourne, that's me. Um, one of my things which is quite interesting is I really hate social media and I, I constantly have this battle between Instagram and Facebook and blah, 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 blah. So I'm not really on that a lot. I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I just, I really struggle with that relationship. But definitely on LinkedIn and you can connect with me through there and um, yeah, then I can pass on my personal details and we can stay in touch. Fantastic. I will just put um, a link to your link in there. And don't you beat yourself about social media. It's, it's not what it's all cut out to be. People might say that's a way to connect with other people, but it just depends on what, what the actual need for it is. You know? And especially like you're saying right now, you need time to center yourself, be yourself, and not just be influenced by the Joneses just because somebody has a Hermes handbag or Louis Vuitton shoes then you feel sort of left out instead of you actually choosing yourself so, yeah you know kudos to you for, for going on that route now you know Jenny we could go on and on but I know people can learn a lot from you and your experience and everything else that you have um, gone through can you just give us um one word of advice something that you lead by given where you've been where you are right now and where you're headed to if you've got maybe a couple of lines of advice that actually do center you and keep you going that you'd like to share with us today oh that's a deep question prosper i need to think about that <laughs> i really um i think people need to have the courage of their convictions. I think they need to believe in themselves. I think they need to have a nice balance of head and gut. So don't underestimate the power of your gut and your gut instincts and, and the feel. Like if something just doesn't feel right, explore it a little bit more. And I guess the five whys will come in at that point. You know, why, why, why? Um, and don't, don't let people pressure or push you into things that you, you don't want to do or you're not ready for, I think. And surround yourself with people who are really supportive. Oh. But not supportive 
not supportive in a yes way that you need to also have people in your support circle that give you the reality check because we all need that reality check as well fantastic i really uh, applaud uh, you, your successes and everything else that you've done jenny a lot of people that would have been in your shoes would have let that sink them but you actually use that as fuel to propel yourself and now you're out here sharing inspiration with everybody else and really giving people uh, to follow their courage of their convictions so there you have it ladies and gentlemen um and that's all for today's episode with um janie and um i actually hope you found this conversation um you know with with, with jenny here insightful and inspiring and remember uh, no matter what it is that you're going through choose yourself first choose your health choose your well-being and ask why five times because that's when you really get to know and understand exactly the reason why you're doing um, anything. And as we continue to navigate these challenging times, let's all stay resilient and adapt adaptable to new changes. As uh, Jenny says, who says you have to have one career at a time. I hope you enjoyed this episode and please subscribe to our podcast. And um, if you can, leave us a review because your feedback helps us improve and bring you more inspiring stories of career pivots and personal growth. Thank you so much, Janie, for um, putting us your time this morning. Thank you. It's been fun. Fantastic. And to our viewers, thank you so much for supporting our show. See you in the next episode of the Online Prosperity Experience. Bye for now.